Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. Today, we're going to be talking about Ayane and Saren. Their banner has just dropped on the global server and it's a little bit exciting. Actually, no, it's not. Spoiler alert, if you want a TLDR for this video, just don't roll. Of course, I'm going to get into a lot more than that. I'm going to do the character analysis, you know, in case you do roll because, you know, there are some some of you out there, you know, that will just go for it. That will just do it. I'll break down both Ayane and Saren and their utilities and where they kind of fit in with the current meta. Without further ado, let's get into Ayane, but I'm not going to read this. Well, I mean, I can't read this. It's a First, we've got Ayane, and let's have a look at her skills real quick. So she has a really interesting UB, where there are two kind of like phases in the UB. First phase actually deals large physical damage to one enemy in the front. However, what's interesting is that even if this phase doesn't work, the second phase actually does. Well, it might. All I'm trying to say is that the two phases or the two like different points, they're not really linked. You don't have to have one to work for the other to work. What's really interesting about the second point is that it is a stun and a knockback, and it is a real yeet. So let me show you real quick what happens, like a little real life demo in my JP account. Ah, no, no, no. Stop going so fast. All right. So I'm going to build her UB up first. Uh, hopefully she'll get her UB on the next monster. Okay. Ready guys? This, this guy's going to go flying across the screen. Okay. Ready? Damage. And he's flown all the way to the back. Now that is, that is pretty big. That's pretty cool. Let me get out of the stage and go through the other skills, but that's really all I wanted to showcase. Like the other ones are pretty straightforward. So now that we're back here, just a quick summary. Like you saw that she knocked back and stunned. So what that means is that they get knocked back and then they get stunned. And so they stay there for a while before they actually walk back to the front. This is potentially pretty important in arena and would definitely like, it'll make you think, it'll make you really think. All right, let's hop onto skill one, which is a small physical damage to all enemies in the front and inflicts stun to the target. So this is actually very similar, if not identical to Nozomi's skill. It's pretty cool cool that a two star gets a skill because like for me it, you know it, it kind of helps with like the cleave comps i really love seeing like four frontliners and then if i ran an ayane for example and just go chop and they all get freaking stunned and it's pretty just it's just funny to see at the very least at best it disrupts a whole bunch of skills and it's just a world of pain for the other team as for skill three we do have a physical defense down which is pretty cool however it's not that good you'll see that the multiplier is actually only 0 0.2 against the skill level so this is actually very similar to shinobu's for example if your ayane was level 85 or 80 or something she would only be getting about like 16 to 20 physical defense down which just is not very much when you got like Juno Makoto that are decreasing by like 70 or 80 or 90 or 100. From a CB perspective if you're really really desperate okay fine but like I really would not. EX skill EX plus just gets physical attack pretty standard pretty cool. As for the bond level bonus she's more built like a bruiser which is kind of nice to be honest I'm a really big fan of bruises in this game right now. now. Let's hop down to her attack pattern which is a defense down into an AoE stun which is really nice because you do want to apply the defense down first before anything else happens. A stun on the second action will more often than not disrupt a lot of skills, to be honest, especially in arena. Loot pattern is pretty average. It's attack, attack, two into attack, and then another one. Not much to say. The start is really, really nice, but the loot pattern is like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. I think that's pretty much it for the evaluation. Now let's talk about like where she's going to be used instead. And before I forget, you can actually purchase her from the battle arena shop. So eventually she will come. Obviously with her being a two star, eventually she will still come. Like, it's just how it is. It's just nature of two stars. Okay, so let's start off with her utility and clan battle. She's okay. Like, I honestly, I wouldn't build her. I really do think that 16 or 20 or whatever defense down just is not too much, especially on that loop. You saw that loop. It was attack, attack, two, attack, one. Unfortunately, that defense down is just not coming up often enough for me to justify building her. I do think that INS spot would be better populated by like another attacker or something. As for Arena, she does make her a very interesting character. As you saw, she yeeted the first unit across the screen. One strategy that comes to mind is the single tank comps or like even maybe the double tank comps. If you do a little bit of calculations, you realize, you know, if it's a single tank comp, say it's just a Nozomi and you yeet him away, you'll probably have enough DPS to take down like the second or the third position of that enemy team. Aside from that though, it doesn't really solve a Miyako Kuka problem. So if it was like a Kuka and a Miyako, you would yeet the Miyako away, probably kill the Kuka, but you would still need to bring magic to defeat that Miyako. I think outside the niche of the one tank comps, I don't, I don't really see Ayane like being used too much. All in all, she's a pretty funny unit and like, you know, I'd love to see some meme strats with her but I don't think she's just like it's just very very hard to call her meta like you can probably make her work like just with some calculations but I probably wouldn't rely on this this is not really like your Anna or your Hatsune which just has so much versatility and just a one-stop shop to like killing everything all right with that being said let's pop over to Saren I think everyone's seen a Saren by now if you've been playing the game for a while you probably meet Saren either in like the dungeon or in the or in battle arena or somewhere else right so I'm just gonna quickly really quickly gloss over her skills
else. Her UB is okay. She does damage to a whole bunch of units in the front line and the damage is actually calculated on her current HP. The lower her HP, the higher the damage. I'm not really a big fan of this. It's like a really, really risky play. And a lot of the time, especially in arena, you can't control this. It just makes calculations like way too complex. And this is not what you would take Saren for. Skill one is physical damage to all enemies in the front line. Just a solid, decent skill. Again, like it's kind of whatever. And now we can go over to skill two, which is the real juicer. It's recover TP to the nearest ally by a small amount. And this is... This is pretty good. Like, again, I'm not trying to talk down on the UB or the rank two skill or like, just, just the skill two is just really the star of the show for Saren. What this does is it actually enables a lot of comps. So for example, you pair up Saren with Tamaki and Tamaki gets her UB off faster. You pair Saren with Ninon and suddenly you've got the Ninon comp. The biggest utility for me is actually part of my CB team. So if I flick over to my nerd docs, you see Saren is right here. So what actually happens in this team is that Saren is giving Makoto the juice and Makoto is able to UB more time Times than she normally can. And Makoto's UV is just a big, big defense down. It's just so good. So it's just a big enabler. Saren is really key to enablement. However, as a standalone character, she's not that good. She does get better. Like, I think she's a real, real juicer at six stars. But again, that's like two years away. Don't even think about it for now, to be honest. As for her bond level bonuses, just a whole bunch of more bruises. That's not a bruiser stat, but it's it's looking like a bruiser. Like, she survives. She's got pretty decent survivability. I don't know. I just don't really... I don't really like her as an attacker. Okay, let's go down to attack pattern, which is a one into a two and then auto, auto, one and then attack and then two. This is nice, but expected. It's just a one into a two, right? The two is what we're really looking for. Again, what's happened is that some people have actually made the Ninon comp, which is dependent on this two, the Saren juicing up the Ninon in which the Yuki would then juice up the Ninon because Ninon has the most TP at that point in time. There's not too much else going on. The next TP boost is actually quite far down. I'm not a big fan of it. I wish it was further up, but it is what it is. EX skill gains more physical attack. It's like, it is what it is. But yeah, a summary of Saren, you use her for Ninon comp, you use her to juice up literally anyone who has a really good UB. This could include people like Shiori, Tamaki, Makoto. If you can play it right and like position her near a mage or something, I would freaking do that too. But otherwise, I would say she's a solid character, but again, not somebody to roll for. All right, now with all that being said, do you roll in this banner? No, you don't. You don't. Ayana is a two star. She becomes available in the shop shortly, and she also is is, you know, she's a two star. You're going to get her sooner or later, whether you like it or not. Saren, on the other hand, is crucial to the Ninon comp, but you can run a lot of comps like that and not the Ninon comp. He is a great supporter in both Arena and CB, but like I would not go out of my way to pull for a Saren. Biggest doozy for Saren is that she now has two farmable nodes. With those two farmable nodes and the 2x hard mode that's coming up, you can probably get Saren real, real fast. Unfortunately, at higher stars, Saren doesn't do much. She just gets more damage. If her TP recovery scaled with damage or her stats, man, that'd be a real juicer but until then like she's a low priority in terms of shard farming you get her you kind of leave her at three stars and you just use her for what she is all that stamina that you would be spending on her getting her to four or five stars it could be on something else eventually when you're looking at getting her six star i'm pretty sure another node open yeah so another node actually opens up 18.3 by then you're gonna have you're gonna have way more than enough shards to six star the saren all in all in summary two really solid units one really really meme unit one very solid unit to be honest however you just can't roll on this you, you can't do it like we just have too many other important things to roll for. All right, I'm going to wrap it up before I keep rambling. That's the end of the video. Let's get on with the secret message. The secret message today is yes, but no. What I mean by that is like, I really like Saren, but no, you don't roll for this. She's just not like Makoto, who you should roll for because she is critical to CB. If you guys could drop that secret message down in comments below, I would really, really appreciate it. it. Tells me that you've made it to this part of the video, the end, which is awesome. I appreciate that. It takes a lot of time to make these videos. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment share you guys know the works come drop by the discord if you have any problems and with that being said thank you guys again so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video bye bye